Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. Bursitis is a painful condition near your joints. It has to do with these small, squishy, fluid-filled sacs called bursa. So what are bursa? What's their purpose? Well, they cushion things near your joints, the bones, the tendons, the muscle, the skin near your joints. So this prevents rubbing between your bones and your tendons and your muscles and your skin. So when they're injured or they're overused, like if you're playing tennis and you have that repetitive tough motion, they can collect uh, extra fluid because they got inflamed and over time their walls may thicken and it could be quite, quite painful and disruptive for your lifestyle. So when the sacs get inflamed around your joints, they may feel stiff. They can hurt to move the joint in a normal way. It's linked to uh, certain injuries and diseases. However, the cause of your case may be unclear. So, hi, my name is Jerry Hickey. I'm a nutritional pharmacist. I'm also the chief scientific officer over here at Envite Health. And welcome to our episode, Supplements for Bursitis. Now, the most common causes of bursitis are repetitive motions or, or positions that put pressure on the bursa around a joint. So, like throwing a baseball lifting something over your head repeatedly, you know, like like fixing your ceiling, painting your ceiling, getting rid of a popcorn ceiling, leaning on your elbows for a long time, uh, extensive kneeling for tasks, you know, like laying carpets or scrubbing the floors. Um, there are ways to help prevent this lifestyle changes. Sports that re, uh, repeat the same motion are a common cause, like tennis. These are some other common causes. Well, it could be a bacterial infection. That's nasty. You really have to see a doctor. Diabetes is connected to an increased risk. So is the uh, the the blood issue gout, where you build up uric acid crystals in your blood. Arthritis, especially rheumatoid arthritis or psoriatic arthritis, even injury from a uh, a fall, but also walking style. Your gait, like if you have an uneven gait, the gait is the way you walk. For example, if one leg is shorter than the other because there's some kind of spinal problem. Now symptoms vary depending on where the bursitis is affecting you. So um, you might feel achy and stiff at the joint. You probably will. It'll hurt more when you move it or you press on it. It looks swollen and red. Now, if it hurts directly around the joint when you move or bend it, it could be a sign of acute bursitis. That's bursitis that comes on um, fairly rapidly. Pain levels vary according to the type of bursitis. We'll go over the types in a minute. Uh, but your range of motion is going to be limited, you know, like lifting up your arm, um, bending your knee. So you might see swelling, especially if the bursitis is in your elbow or the heel or your kneecap. However, chronic bursitis in the hips, the shoulders, the inner knee, that doesn't tend to get inflamed as much. Now, how long does your bursitis last? Well, you know, if you take care of it, it'll last a shorter time. So it can last a short time could be weeks if it's treated properly, but it it could turn out to be a long-term problem. So it can last for several months, even in some people years. But in most cases, bursitis uh, pain goes away within a few weeks if you treat it properly. Uh, You can have recurrent flares of bursitis. That's not uncommon if you don't watch yourself. So what are the treatments? I'm going to give you the doctor treatments first, and that's important. Your doctor can help. Uh, Usually they prescribed NSAID drugs like Advil or Aleve. Now there's a caveat with that. If you stay on NSAID drugs for too long, especially at a high dosage, they could become quite dangerous. Sometimes they could cause kidney problems. Um, Many of them cause severe weeping, bleeding ulcers. Uh, Some of them can trigger an asthma attack and people prone to asthma. Uh, Some of them increase the risk of posterior cup posterior subcapsular cataracts. <clears throat> um, they can affect your hearing. You can have tinnitus from them. They could be a little toxic to your hearing. Um, 
But also they can make your legs swell, cause fluid retention. They can raise your blood pressure. They can even trigger a stroke, a heart attack, and heart failure. So you have to use those types of drugs with discretion. And it's simple to prove this. Next time you buy a box of ibuprofen or naproxen sodium, um, open the box and look at the leaflet and right on top in front, there's a black box warning. That's the highest level of warning that something is dangerous. Um, and in this case, it has to do with the heart, blood pressure, stroke. Because they could trigger a stroke in some people within the first week of use. Then not without issues. So, yes, you could use the NSAIDs, use them sparingly, try to keep it down to three to five days if you can. Um, now, the doctor may suggest steroid injections. Am I against that? Well, besides being a nutritionist, I'm a pharmacist. And one shot can help. It could cut the swelling. It could cut the pain. So when they, when they shoot the corticosteroid drug into the bursa, which hurts, but, you know, it's no big deal. It's over in a minute. Uh, they use a wide needle. It relieves the pain and inflammation, especially in your shoulder or your hip. It works quickly. And like I said, usually it's only one injection. Do not get many repeated injections of a corticosteroid drug. That's a bad thing. More than two injections in the same site start to start to melt the tissues. That's not a joke. So you don't want to get more than two shots. Like I've spoken to people who've gone to their podiatrist, and the podiatrist has given them 12 shots in the same site, and now they have, like, chronic issues. Not a good idea. Never have more than two corticosteroid shots into the same site, and they should be separated by weeks. Now, what about lifestyle? Yeah, protect your bursa. Um... First of all, you have to uh, avoid motions that are going to cause pain because pain is a warning from the body that something's wrong. Now, if you're using your knees, use pads or cushions to protect your knees or your butt uh, if you sit or kneel a lot. Um, get like like get the socks that are um, um, highly insulated, you know, like the socks they use for running or tennis because that gives you extra cushioning. And you could put cushions in your shoes. Um, you could get pads to protect your elbows so that fluid doesn't build up again. Now, you can use ice or heat. Um, ice can help get rid of the pain. Never ice for more than 22 minutes because then it becomes negative. And this is especially for areas uh, closer to the surface of the skin, like the kneel cap, the knee cap, the heel, the elbow. For deeper situs in your shoulder or your inner knee or hip, heat might work better. So apply the ice to reduce the swelling for the first 48 hours, especially after symptoms occur. And once again, no more than 22 minutes at a shot. Apply dry or moist heat, such as a heating pad. You could take a warm bath. Cushion your knees if you sleep on your side by placing a small pillow between your legs. Now to prevent uh, bursitis, use kneeling pads. Lift things properly, like bend when you, with your knees when you when you lift. Uh, if you don't, you're putting extra stress on, on the bursa in your hips. Take breaks. You alternate repetitive tasks with rest or other activities. Maintain a healthy weight. I mean, being overweight really plus, places a lot more pressure and stress on your joints. Think about it. Every pound puts two pounds of pressure on your knee joint when you're walking. And it's worse when you're running. So if you're 50 pounds overweight, with every step, you're putting an extra 100 pounds of pressure on your knee. So let me give you an idea of what weight does to your knees and how it can complicate bursitis if you have it in the knees or hips. Every pound of body weight equals two pounds of pressure when you take a step. So every step for every pound in your body is two pounds. So if you're 10 pounds overweight, you're putting an additional... 100,000 pounds of pressure on your knees if you take 5,000 steps a day. So if you're 10 pounds overweight, 100,000 extra pounds of pressure on your two knees every day. So to give you a more clear example, a 170 pound person at 5,000 steps per day, the total pressure on their knees. Now this is if, if they're walking, if they're jumping or running, that's a lot more pressure. So if they're walking 5,000 steps a day, 100 and 70 pound person, that's 1,700,000 pounds of pressure on your knees. 
here's the difference. A 200-pound person at 5,000 steps a day, 2 million pounds of pressure on your knees. So a million pounds of pressure on each knee. So the best remedy for arthritic knees is losing extra weight. But if you have a bursitis in your lower legs or in your legs, you want, you want to lose that extra weight also. Exercise. It strengthens your muscles and it helps protect your affected joint. Warming up and stretching before exercise. Do do the, the stretching. Do the kind of movement stretching when you're warm, warm warming up. You know, don't do a a static stretch. And as I mentioned, physical therapy is very important because physical therapy um, will help strengthen the muscles and tissues around the affected joint. Help prevent future damage. It's very helpful whenever you have any kind of trauma to a muscle, a ligament, a tendon, a bursa cell. A joint is very, very helpful. So what can we do? There are herbs that help a great deal with inflammation. The first one being the turmeric plant. Now the turmeric plant is the plant that gives curry its um, signature flavor and color and odor. It's very pleasant. But turmeric is poorly absorbed. So you want to get a turmeric that they improve the absorption of. Like the uh, curcumin with the pepper extract, uh, the bioperine, or the, uh, the biocurcumin. Those are better absorbed curcumins. You want to get the full plant. Uh, everybody talks about curcumin, but curcumin is only one of the ingredients from the turmeric plant, and it's only up to 5% of the total plant. So you want to get the full plant. You get better, better effect. In fact, uh, when they did research down at Baylor Medical Center in Dallas, they found that giving the complete plant of the turmeric plant, but well absorbed. In fact, they use our biocurcumin in their research. Uh, you get much better benefit for inflammation. Um, also, uh, besides um, turmeric, some people call it curcumin, but it's turmeric. Boswellia serrata. That's a biblical herb. <laughs> um, it's known as frankincense. And uh, it has ingredients in it, boswellins. And these are great for inflammation, any kind of inflammation in the body. The curcumin tends to inhibit the, um, the COX-2 enzyme, whereas the Boswellia tends to inhibit the 5-lipoxygenase pathway. And so you're coming at the inflammation from, from two sides, and when you add these together, like a, a curcumin with a Boswellia, a turmeric with a Boswellia that are well absorbed, um, you really get added benefit. There, there's some kind of additive or synergism there, some kind of additive effect or synergism. Perna canaliculus. Perna is a green muscle. They call it the green-lipped muscle. It generally grows around New Zealand. And it's very high in uh, the fish oil type of fatty acids. But it has some additional fatty acids you don't get in a regular fish oil capsule that are terrific for pain and inflammation. Like I use it all the time in people who have arthritis. There's been a number of studies in people with arthritis, a number of studies in people with other inflammatory conditions like bowel conditions and skin conditions, and also dogs with arthritic joints. And it really does help. Um, Perna works well if you mix it with a, a plant, a seed called perilla, which also has essential fatty acids that are the plant version of fish oils and it's great for it's great for rheumatic pain it's great for arthritic pain it's great for inflammation in the colon inflammation in the skin inflammation in the prostate or the urinary tract like interstitial cystitis uh, but it's great for joint pain and it's great for lung inflammation and it's great for bursitis now you can also apply a good hemp if it's rich in CBD, cannabidiol, which is very safe to use. So you get a, a, a cream or an ointment or a liniment. If there's added magnesium or menthol, it'll help. So how do you do these things? What, what, what's the call to action? If you get a good curcumin or a good frankincense boswellia, like we use biocurcumin 5 aloxin, I w up front, it's a, a, a it's a very painful condition, bursitis. Up front, I would take two capsules twice a day with breakfast and dinner for like the first several weeks. Then after that, you can reduce it to like one capsule three times a day with meals. If you're using Perna, I've seen the products I've seen on the market. I would use two capsules twice a day with breakfast and dinner. And if you're going to apply a hemp cream, a CBD cream, I would apply it twice a day, morning and evening. 
So thank you for tuning into the Invite Health Podcast. You can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts, or you could just go to our homepage, invitehealth.com. Uh, scroll down, you'll see a big icon for podcasts. Uh, please subscribe. Please leave us a review. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health. I hope to see you another time on another episode of the Invite Health Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Jerry Hickey, signing off. Music.